Okay, so good evening, everyone. My name is Marguerite Anglin, and I'm the Public Art Director for the City of Philadelphia. Uh, and on behalf of OACCE, the City's Office of Arts, Culture, and the Creative Economy, I'd like to welcome you all to our Artist Show and Tell uh, design presentation meeting for the broad Germantown Erie Percent for Art Project. We are so happy to have you join us this evening as and this is really an exciting milestone that we reach in every project um, where you'll, as the community, finally um, get to see designs uh, that are being proposed by our four artist teams for a collection of artworks, several artworks that will be installed at the Broad German Town or BGE intersection. And the city is very uh, proud to commission this artwork as part of the city's um, percent for art program and we're really excited for the artists to share their designs um, with you. Uh, so um, Rachel, would you like to move to the next slide and also um, introduce yourself? Sure. Hi everyone. My name is Rachel Schwartzman. I work with Marguerite in the Office of Arts, Culture and the Creative Economy and I'm a project manager for percent for art and I've been managing this project um, and I'm also really excited that we've reached this point and excited for you to all see the fantastic designs that the artists are going to present. Awesome. Next slide, please. All right. So these are the four artist teams that you will be hearing from tonight. Um, and I'll just uh, ask them to kind of wave their hand to give them time to, uh, to introduce themselves a little bit later, but they'll just kind of wave their hand so you can see them. Um, so we have uh, the artist team of Diamond Whipper Young and Michael Kopage. We have Gary Moore. We also have the artist team Amber Art and Design, uh, which is Linda Fernandez and Kira Johnson. And we also have the artist team of Pauline Houston and Kate Brockman. So during the presentation tonight, uh, each artist is gonna share their drawings and renderings and describe their vision for this artwork. And as, you're, as you'll see, um, these artists have each created very unique designs that tell uh, very different stories about uh, the neighborhood, um, and uh, we're just excited for you to also be able to share your, your thoughts about their artwork. Next slide. All right, so here is our agenda. Um, so as I, so we will, uh, we're going through our welcome and introductions. Um, we'll talk to you a little bit about the goals of this meeting. Um, we will talk about the um, Broad Germantown Erie BGE Percent for Art project, an overview of the project itself, as well as an overview of the city's Percent for Art program. Then we'll have the our artist proposal presentations, and we'll have time for um, Q and A after that. And then we'll have a little, a bit of time to to um, for some to talk to you about next steps and plug a survey that we want to invite all of you to participate in, which we're going to be talking about um, in a minute. Next slide. So here are our goals for tonight. Um, we obviously want um, you know, many of you who may have been involved in some of the prior community engagement for this project may already be familiar with the city's Percent for Art program, but any of you who might be new to Percent for Art, we want to just give you a quick overview of the program that's commissioning this artwork. Um, we also want to tell you a little bit about the, the, the BGE and Percent for Art project itself. So you have that context um, as you're listening to each of our artists present. Then you're gonna see the artist teams present their proposed designs for public art at the BGE intersection. Um, you'll also have opportunity, as I mentioned, to ask the artist questions about their designs. And then we wanna hear from you. Um, you, know, uh, you will have an opportunity to share your feedback and rate the designs in a public survey that will open tonight. So just as a quick overview, uh, the city's uh, of Philadelphia's Percent for Art program uh, the whole mission is to commission beautiful and long-lasting artworks um, all throughout the city of Philadelphia uh, that reflect the diversity and uniqueness of uh, all the different neighborhoods and people and cultures that make up the city. Next slide, please. So the program is really, it's an ordinance, it's a law that requires for certain city-funded major renovation or construction projects 
um, they require for 1% of that total project to be designated to site-specific permanent public art. So in projects that are major renovation projects where the city is funding similar to what the renovations that are happening at the broad Germantown and Erie intersection, that has now triggered a, um, a requirement for site-specific public art. All of the funding for a percent for our projects go directly to the artists who could be emerging or they could be established artists or artist teams, which you'll be hearing from today, um, as well as individual artists who will create and install the artwork. So that was a little bit of an overview. I wanna uh, let Rachel now give you a little bit more of an overview of this particular project. Thanks, Marguerite. So um, every project, every Percent for Art project has a call to artists that our office puts out to um, bring in applicants. And this project, the Broad Germantown Erie project, we had 52 applicants apply in the August and September of 2023. And then um, it's a two-part competition. So part one was the applicants submitted their qualifications. There were 52 of them. And then um, the Percent for Art Committee, which is a group of stakeholders that are involved in all of the decision making for every project, um, including local community members, community leaders, artists, um, members of the government, and then users of the as part of city planning, um, all were part of the committee that selected the four finalists who you're going to hear from tonight. So they were selected in October of 2023. And community input is just really vital and crucial to every project in order to make the public art really site specific and really meaningful to every community. It's really important that um, the community gives voice to the direction of what the artwork, um, what, what are the goals for the art project to actually get to meet the finalist artists. You're seeing the photographs on this slide. These are our artists from this project meeting, maybe some of you who are on this call um, in November at a community meeting and finding out what kind of stories the community want, would like to see reflected in this artwork. And the community also, as, um, as we're in right now, is gonna give input on the proposed designs and give feedback to the artists for the artists to consider in refining their designs further to reflect the input of the community. So um, as I mentioned, there's been um, some community engagement to date already with Broad Germantown Erie and maybe some of you were involved. We actually have a poll question to find out if some of you were involved on the next slide. Um, but way back in November of 2022, there were actually two community input meetings where um, we heard about the importance of this artwork speaking to youth and reflecting the culture and values of the community. So that information was put into the call to artists. And then in the spring of 2023, there was another public survey that we put out to find out what quotes were particularly meaningful to this community. Cause that, as you'll hear, is part of um, the story of this project is embedding meaningful quotes. And so that survey helped to find out what some of those quotes might be. And then just this past November, we had the public, um, we called it the artist meet and greet. So that's what you're seeing images of here where these four finalist artists got to come and hear from the community before they started their designs to help shape and inform the direction of their proposals. So I'm gonna quickly, um, oops, let me go back. I'm going to quickly open up a poll to find out um, if any of you have participated in prior community engagement for the Broad Germantown Area Percent for Art Project. So you should see a poll pop up on your screen and just let us know if this is your first time um, being part of this project or if you've attended any other community engagements. Um, I, I did just launch the poll, but I'm not seeing any responses. So I'm wondering if maybe it's not appearing on. I'm seeing some responses you online. Are? Yeah, oh, I guess okay. it's coming up for me. <laughs> 
Interesting. Okay. And right now we have 13. That is interesting. Right now we have 13 people who have participated so far. Great. Um, right now it's about split 50, 50. So, and about, it, it, there's another couple of people who have responded as well. So it's about 50, 50, half of the, half of you guys have already, um, participated and probably aware, or maybe have attended some of the meetings that, um, Rachel mentioned, and I also see we uh, have some people who are also still uh, joining the meeting as well. So, and then half haven't. So this is great. I'm glad we were able to give an overview of where we are today for those who haven't participated so far. And welcome. Okay, so just to give you a little overview, a description of the Broad Germantown Erie Percent for Art project. So, the BGE intersection creates these two triangles, um, the Butler Triangle and the Erie Triangle. And this is where the city is making a lot of site improvements to the intersection overall. Um, and some of you may, you know, may be familiar with the, the triangles now as they look, but in the, in the renovated version, they're gonna be much larger. There's gonna be a lot of landscaping. They're really um, meant to be spaces where people gather and can enjoy, um, being and not just, you know, walking through. And a, a collection of several public artworks is going to be located on both the Butler and Erie triangles. So this commission is not one singular piece. It's it's several artworks spread throughout both of the triangles as a kind of a unifying visual feature. Um, each artist you'll see tonight is proposing a different collection of artworks, and they may consist of mosaic, sculpture and or custom bike racks. And the artworks that you'll see tonight are inspired by the quotes that I mentioned that came from the community and that the community voted on as feeling particularly meaningful to them. And here are some renderings of the, the future triangles that I was just mentioning um, after the renovations are completed. These are visions of what the, it will look like there. And on the top, you'll see the Erie Triangle. Um, and there's two locations where the collections of artwork might appear. There could be artwork on these um, planters. There could be mosaic there. There could be a sculpture right here in the large planter. And then on the bottom, you'll see the Butler Triangle and the opportunities there include custom bike racks, a sculpture in another large planter, and then there's also this sort of curved seat wall that could have mosaic on it. Okay, so as we mentioned, there's going to be a public survey at the end of this meeting. You're going to get a link to go right to it, and that's where you're going to get to write in your feedback and also rate the different proposals that you're hearing tonight. And we want you to keep these questions in mind as you're hearing from the artists, because these six um, topics are what you're going to be rating their proposals on. So artistic excellence, how excellent is the design visually and artistically? And you'll be asked on the survey to rank from one to five how excellent you feel the design is. Originality, how would you rate the originality and uniqueness of the proposed design? Emotional qualities, does the design evoke a strong positive feeling for the viewer? Site appropriateness, is this site specific to this location? Educational qualities, how would you rate this proposed design's ability to educate viewers about the culture and values of the nice town Tioga community? And connection to youth, is the design engaging to youth and would it inspire them to make a positive impact in this community. So you'll see these words again, you'll see these questions again when you're on the survey, but we just want you to have in mind that the, this is sort of how you're viewing these proposals is through these lenses. Um, and directly after the meeting that the survey will open up, it will stay open till the 24th. So we encourage you to fill it out and then please share it widely with other local residents that you know in the area. Okay, um, we'll take an, a couple minutes now just in case anyone on this meeting has questions about Percent for Art or about the BGE Public Art Project. You can just um, click the raise your hand 
button if you would like to ask a question. I'm not seeing any hands. I know everyone wants to get right to the artists. <laughs> so do I. All right. So let's move us along. Okay, here we are. We're about to, oh, we have a question from Stephanie. Um, okay, Stephanie, you can go ahead. Hi. Hi. I had a question actually of um, the pieces. The they were They looked like planters that had maybe like glass mosaic on them. I was curious that. That looks like a new piece. I was just wondering what piece that was. It was on one of the earlier slides. Hmm. Um, I'm just going back. Are you talking about on the this slide where we saw where the artwork is going to go? No, it was one of the examples of public art that I'm sure your office has installed somewhere. I just was wondering what where that piece was. Um, with the glass mosaic. It was like, they looked like little round planters. Yeah, yeah that was a commission that actually um, recently got uh, approval for seating outside of the Pascoville Library. Oh, amazing. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. Um, so we're gonna jump into the artist proposals now. And each artist is going to have 10 minutes to present. And we're gonna ask you to please hold your questions until the end. So if you have a question for a specific artist about something in their design, just jot it down so you don't forget it. And you can ask it to that particular person at the end, people, the team. Um, you also might have a more general question that could be answered by any artist. So um, just jot it down and we'll open up the questions at the end. And the chat also is currently disabled, but will be open at the end if you'd prefer to, to type in a question instead of say it out loud. And lastly, um, remember to consider each proposal that you're going to see as a collection of artworks and um, not really as any individual piece. Each artist is presenting several works that are one proposal. All right. So um, this, is a little sneak peek. So right, what you're seeing on this slide is actually all four collections. There's a lot of visual information here and you're not meant to be able to really take it all in because the artists are gonna walk you through each piece of what you're seeing. But this is um, to illustrate to you what I was just mentioning, which is that you're gonna be seeing collections. You're gonna be seeing multiple artworks that could be mosaic, it could be sculpture, and or they could be bike racks and each artist is gonna be showing a different collection. So they might not all have those same elements and they don't, you'll see, um, you'll see soon the different combinations. But um, these are our four teams. We'll hear from um, Amber Art, then we'll hear from Diamond with Briang and Michael Kopaj, then we'll hear from Gary Moore, and then we'll hear from Pauline and Kate. So without further ado, we are gonna get started here. And proposal number one, Amber Art and Design. Linda and Kira, you can uh, unmute yourselves and I'll try to pin you as well. And you can just say um, next slide as soon as you're ready, but here's your first slide. Thanks, Rachel. And good evening, everyone. My name is Linda Fernandez and I'm joined by Kira Johnston. We are part of an artist collective called Amber Art and Design, and we've been working in Philadelphia for over 10 years, creating public art, um, doing a lot of community engagement, and really our work is based on using art as a way to engage people in designing public spaces. So I'm going to pass it to Kier to talk a little bit about the inspiration behind the designs, and then I can talk a little bit more about each specific element. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Keir Johnston, and I'd just like to take a quick second for thank everybody for being here. I know I was working in the sun all day, and you know it's a lot to take a little time out of your day to participate in public service like this. And yeah, I just appreciate everybody taking the time and, and joining us. We 
are based here in Philadelphia. And a quick disclaimer, uh, our studio is in North Philly. And so if the, the background gets a little noisy, it's just the, the exuberance of, of North Philly joining, joining in with us today. And so, yeah, I just wanted to preface a little bit in terms of what was our inspiration for some of the artwork that you're going to you're going to see and, and that we have to share. Um, as somebody who has lived in and out of Philadelphia my entire life, uh, I have also had the opportunity to live in other places, and I'm very familiar with um, that area and that intersection. We have recently done uh, a number of projects in that area. Uh, our studio is in North Philly. My dad went to Temple in the 60s, uh, per uh, presently working on Mary Bethune School, which is uh, in, in a, a schoolyard renovation, which is a, about three or four blocks from that intersection. So we're through that area all the time. And every time I get to come back to Philadelphia, I'm, I'm just kind of really inspired and blown away uh, by the beauty of our neighborhoods and also the architecture and and, and buildings that, that surround us and, and of which we call home, um, especially in, in the area of BGE and that intersection and all the blocks that kind of extend from that point. Uh, kind of like how a family or, or an individual is, is, is extremely unique I walk around uh, with an artistic lens and am able to really appreciate how every block is so individual and everyone has this unique ornate stylings that, that kind of set it apart from other areas and some more so than others. Uh, the areas around BGE, uh, the, the houses and, and, and some of the flagship buildings and architecture are just really mind blowing. and so. We were inspired by the legacy of space and the iconography that that kind of uh, is is always around us, and just how, for me, that is emblematic and, and reflective of of the beautiful people that live there. Philadelphia being a very diverse neighborhood, you know, and especially our vibrant communities of color, which I believe that intersection uh, very much so represents. It's amazing that the the architecture kind of shares that vibrancy. And so we wanted to kind of speak to the legacy of space and showcase how, in a lot of ways, the, the beauty of the buildings of which we all live in uh, is reflective of the beauty of the neighborhoods and, and the, the, the people that, that call it home. And a lot of which these neighborhoods have, have been representative of, of the neighborhoods that live there for uh, generations. And we just wanted to add uh, a beacon to this intersection that would kind of be reflective of the people that that, that share the space and go through there, uh, not only in, in transient, because uh, I know that's a, a very busy intersection of, of public transportation, but very much so of the people that, that call it home in the surrounding areas. Uh, we utilize the quote or some of the quotes that were shared more so in a, a, a metaphor type of exchange like this this bike rack showcasing um, the the quote that that, that, that embodied uh, sun and sunshine and, 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 and love and glow and, and um, yeah we just want this to be something that people can very be much so be proud of and one that people can can point to as something that is a landmark and you know something that 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 begins and ends people's days as they 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 enter public transportation through the broad line as they go to work or, or come home. Um, so yeah, the the neighborhood and walking around was very much our source of inspiration. And yeah, I'll hand it back to Linda to kind of walk us through the images a little bit more. Thanks, Kier. So I feel like we've seen this slide enough. Um, and as Kier mentioned, this was inspired by the the theme of sunshine, but also coming directly from architecture from the cast iron security features on windows and doors in the neighborhood. Um, so we wanted to echo a little bit of that in the design. Next slide, please. 
So we're, we're proposing to have two freestanding sculptures. This one is for the Butler Triangle. And the sculptures are also mimicking the architecture. Um, and as Kier mentioned, we want this artwork to be reflective. We want this to speak to the, the legacy and the history of the neighborhood and really be reflective of the unique architecture of the area. Next slide, please. Um, so this is also at the Butler Triangle and there is a round concrete, cast concrete seat wall. And we are proposing to put mosaic around um, that area. The images are also reflective of this theme of sunshine, also this theme of hope, things that came out of the community meeting, the feedback from the community meeting. And um, can somebody please mute this? Voice? Thank you. <laughs> And um, we wanted to use bright colors. We wanted to have this really um, vibrant feel. And um, also this, this imagery is still reflective of some of the elements that we saw in the architecture in the neighborhood. Next slide, please. So here is the Erie Triangle. There's several planter boxes. And we're proposing to do mosaic on those planter boxes as well. Um, again, using utilizing a similar color palette and a similar um, design feature, we want the designs to be really organic, um, really speak to the beauty of the neighborhood. The next slide, please. And this is the sculpture for the Erie Triangle. So. Um, reflective of the architecture. We wanted it to be different than the other sculpture, different but the same. And in a way, it's to think about the past and also to think about the future. So the sculptures are also meant to be in conversation with each other as they are in conversation with the neighborhood and reflecting the architecture. Next slide, please. Um, so here's just a view of how things will look in the spaces. On the top right is the Butler Triangle with the bike racks and the sculpture. And then right below it is where you could see the seat wall with the mosaic. And then in the bottom left is the Erie Triangle where you can see the mosaic flower um, planters and also the sculpture in the um, in the background. So Kier, is there anything that I didn't mention? I think we have like 30 seconds. No, I just want to thank everybody again and, and uh, really humbled and proud to be able to share this work with everybody. And, and regardless of who gets selected, I think it's going to be an amazing addition to your 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 neighborhood and community and and on top of all that i hope everybody has a blessed day awesome thanks so much karen linda and for uh launching and getting us started here we're going to move on to proposal number two so um diamond and michael you can unmute yourselves and all right thank you rachel um mm -hmm. First, I would just like to say thank you for everyone coming and the other artists. I interned under Amber Arts, so this is a very full circle moment for me. I work with Pauline. I met Gary, so I'm so excited, not just for our proposal, but for everyone else. Um, so first thing, we can go to the next slide. Um, my name is Donna Whipper young I'm an artist and I'm an educator. Um, I'm Temple all day long, Temple University. I was homecoming queen. So the North Philadelphia is like what my introduction to Philly was. It was how I fell in love with Philly. And um, as an artist, I began working with a lot of public arts. I worked with the mural arts on murals. Um, we're working with Percent for Art for another sculpture. So um, I really just like 
centering my projects around community engagement. And this is just a great opportunity to further my work. And I have an artist partner named Michael Kopaj. Hi, everyone. My name is Michael Kopaj. Um, I'm a graduate of PAFA there in Center City. Um, I lived in North Philly as well um, and spent uh, a lot of time near the site that we're discussing today. I worked for a juvenile detention center in the neighborhood and I went to Max's quite a bit, my favorite <laughs> cheesesteak in the in the city. Um, and my work is also very focused on community and engaging community. Uh, I've worked with Philly Mural Arts Institute to produce public sculptures in other states. So uh, in addition to working in Philadelphia, uh, I've worked nationally as well. Uh, and so we'll we'll continue. I'll pass it back to Diamond. All right, next slide. All right, so here are all four of our, our offerings on this one slide. So um, we have two triangles we're working with. The first Butler Triangle, we have a sculpture in the planter garden, and we also have design on the seating. And then the second um, triangle, Erie Triangle, we have another sculpture, and we design the planters. And what was a, a big thing when mapping out um, our art pieces is we wanted them to interact with each other. So um, while these people pieces interact with each other. We also wanted to um, invite people who were walking through to reveal hidden components. And we also wanted um, people driving past to like really be welcomed with something bright and bold and fresh in this environment. Um, if you see these two pictures side to side, the triangle on the left and the triangle right actually are connected through symbols and quotes, which we'll um, get into on the next slide. But I just want to paint a picture of all our images together. So we can go to the next slide. All right, so with our um, next slide, as you heard my artist partner, Michael, and throughout this whole process, he's been asking me about Max's cheesesteak. Like, is Max still gonna be there? And I think that that was a big, um, feeling I got when I talked to community members that asking me like, we want it to be revitalized, but we don't want gentrification. So a big point of us is we want to revitalize this community, but we also want to still embrace the existing neighborhood. And we want to make sure everyone is included. So with this focus, we focused on um, preserving the Black culture of this community, of this neighborhood, which has been historically Black, um, and a lot of community members shared experiences about um, the culture of Broad, Germantown, and Erie. So what we first want to get into on our triangle, we had three symbols. One symbol, um, the first one is Sankofa, represents a symbol of wisdom. It also represents learning from the past to build for a better future. And this is important because one thing I kept hearing is intergenerational communion. We want young people to come with older people. We don't want this to be a separator. We really want this to bring the neighborhood together. The second symbol uh, is a symbol for authority, leadership, and charisma. And one thing that um, we've been hearing is they want the youth to take back the community. They want it to be proud. They want to build leaders from this neighborhood of existing youth. And then our third symbol it represents a fence, a symbol of safety, security, and love. And within the past few years, um, this hasn't been the safest neighborhood. So we really want to um, change that narrative and we really want to create a sense of pride. So you can go to the next slide. So I know it's a lot of moving pieces. That was the first triangle. Now, if you were to cross the street, this would be the second triangle and each um, symbol correlates with a quote that the community members gave to us and I found them extremely powerful. So um, the first one is reflect on the past to build a better future. Again, emphasizing honoring the past, the present and the future in order to create um, a better community for us all. The second quote is one of my favorite, if not you, then who, and if not now, then who. And there's not, no better call to action of people um, realizing that they have the power, whether it doesn't matter how old you are, if you're 
from the neighborhood your old life or coming in, you have power to create what you want to see. And then the third is it's not where you live, but how you live. And again, just reclaiming that space, reclaiming that pride. We want people to beam when they say they're from North Philadelphia and talk about all the goodness that it has. So we can go to the next slide. So our third offering is seating. Um, you saw with the last presentation. And with this, I really wanted to bring bold colors. And me and Michael both agreed that like the community um, wanted to be something fun, playful. So we really wanted to drive that home with the patterns. But also we wanted to use um, the transitioning of a color as a transitioning of the community of this triangle changing into a new era. So we really wanted the cars driving past to like not break the neck. We don't want anybody to crash, but we want we want the entire North Philadelphia to feel the change and to see it from far away or if you're walking through. You can go to the next slide. Um, these are the Erie planners. And again, um, we just want to make sure that walker people who are walking past are engaged and also people who are driving past and maybe people who are driving past to be welcomed into this community so we have mosaic tiles and we again we're reaffirming that black heritage those those roots that we really want to keep close as we develop these projects and these communities so people always have a sense of belonging so you can go to the next slide and Michael, did you want to say a few words about the materials we're using? Yeah, sure. Um, our um, our offerings, we're uh, hoping to make are going to be made out of aluminum. Uh, and then they'll be coated with uh, automobile paint. So that'll make them weatherproof and corrosion proof. Um, for the planners and for the seating, we were thinking about ceramic tiles for the mosaics. Um, you know, so the so the materials in combination with uh, the symbols and the shape all speak to heritage. You know, uh, ceramic tile is probably one of the oldest uh, mediums, uh, it, it, along with weaving and pottery and this sort of thing. And then the pyramid and the triangles make cultural references as well. So we're trying to tie everything together conceptually, as well as uh, including the insights that we gleaned from uh, the community members and community stakeholders. Yeah, so thank you. And I just want to tie it all together with um, thanking everyone. I hope you all could feel our energy through these offerings, through these sculptures, and really take away these themes that we're exploring. And thank you again for the artists um, and everyone for being here. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, Diamond and Michael. And we're gonna move on to Gary Moore. So Gary, you can unmute, unmute yourself. Okay, so I'm going to discuss my three projects and I'll start with my vision, my concept, then I'll go through the slides. How's that? Okay, so this is the total uh, involvement of all, all my pieces. Uh, I want to uh, speak for a moment about the, my, my vision. And so what uh, I learned from the first community meeting is that the community right now is in, is in transition. There's a lot of social sort of, sort of activity and changes that are happening. And so what I try to do is to use color as a means of calming, bringing down the temperature in the area. And uh, I think that works very well with all three pieces. I also want to celebrate the vitality of the community, uh, the history of the community. Uh, I was I was raised in Broad Mary. I went to Kenderton, uh, Gillespie, and Gratz, and I worked on uh, Broad Mary all my life. And my family's been living there for like a very long time, so I'm very familiar with, with the culture and the people and the history. Uh, when I first moved there, it was multicultural. There are people from all over and various ethnic groups. And um, I got 10 minutes, I'm trying to talk kind of fast, but I slow a little bit. And so I want to celebrate the vitality of the past community. And because the community is in transition, I like to, to uh, confirm the, the past and the present and to 
hopefully move towards the future in a sense. So my three projects are the Airy Planter, where I'll be using glass mosaics to front the Broad Street area surface. And so my theme is, is the Sankofa bird. Uh, the total project is called Sankofa in Flight. And so the concept, because the idea for the project was storytelling and words from the community, I created my own story. And my story is Afro Sankofa is flying into the area and is landing in these three places. So when it lands on the planters, it's the arrival of the Sankofa bird. He arrives, it has these colors and patterns, it's the energy and the vitality. Um, and number two is the butler seat wall, and it covers only the top portion of the seat. So you have to be there inside the, um, the seat wall area, the butler triangle to experience that. And so there are areas you see on the top uh, right on the seat wall towards the end of the first uh, graphic. Uh, there are areas for, for quotes from the community, their comments. Uh, one of the larger sort of ideas was that the community wanted something there that reflects their philosophies and their and their, their being there for a long time and their nervousness about the future. And these colors and patterns do that in a kind of Afrocentric way. The Butler sculpture is on the Butler Triangle and it faces south. So conceptually, it has a conversation with William ben Penn's statue on the uh, City Hall um, uh, building. And that's the, uh, on top of that is the Sankofa. And next slide, we'll, I'll go through all these in detail. Um, so for the planters, I haven't seen these slides in this format before. I this is, a, this is different. So, so what I did was the colors for the planter are taken from the subway, the, the uh, trolley cars that, that existed in the past and exist today. So I learned through research that the, uh, the buses and trolley cars had these color schemes over the years. And those color schemes reflect the past of the, the transit area, the present and the future. And so next slide. And this is another image of the planters with the, the uh, designs inserted. The drawing to your top left says preliminary sketch for Afro Sankofa nesting is a drawing that I did. And this motif will be placed around the planters in various colors. You see the bottom right, you see the bird's feathers and you see the bird's face. And I want you to remember that this is only a concept. It's my vision for the project. So. There'll be a lot of changes and the final final uh, designs will be a little different, but you see the energy that's there, the vitality. Uh, it's Afrocentric and I think it reflects a community and my experience and my family's experience of living there at Broadenary. Uh, next slide. And this is the seat wall at the uh, Butler Triangle and you can see the designs and patterns here I put a little bit of the design on the top portion of, this, of the, the uh, seat wall. And so that shows that the, uh, the entire seat wall will not be covered with the glass mosaic, but they'll go on a top surface. And so when you're sitting down, you're sitting down on an artwork. You give you a, you're a part of it and it gives you the, that kind of vitality. Uh, the drawing to your top right is a preliminary sketch of the designs that I did. It's only a concept of what we transfer it over to the uh, seat wall. Next slide. And this is the Butler Triangle. And what I've done here on the Butler Triangle, um, this is the same drawing you just saw, but more details of it. And I want to give you the idea of the textures of the glass mosaic. And, and you can see the kind of like chopped up and broken but I think that sort of it has a kind of crassy and, and cultural feel. It's a very positive thing. My primary reason for, for having these designs, like I said before, is to bring to the area a sort of, of toning down and, and a calming people. Because the community is very busy, it's, it's challenging with social issues and such. And so these designs can be seen when you're riding the subway and coming up, you hear all these bright colors, you see all these patterns. And the more you see these and live with these, you see them differently every time. 
what I noticed about transit work is that when you do images that you create images that are kind of static and you see them once and you've seen them, but when you have more to look at, you experience them differently every time you see them. Uh, next slide. That's the last one. Okay. Uh, this is my previous work. Uh, oh, here it is. Th th this is the, uh, go back a little bit to the last slide. You want me to go to the last one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's th This is the uh, signature piece. It's called the Afro Sankofa Perched. And on, on top of the sculpture is the actual Sankofa bird. It's done, it's created in powder colored aluminum. It's in three panels. And there are areas where they'll be allowed, like for instance, the top right portion of the sculpture uh, is, is a blue area. That's an area, all four of the areas can be used for quotes. Uh, like when I was over to the, uh, the first community engagement, uh, a lot of the residents wanted some sort of reflection of Zion Baptist Church's presence in the community and the importance of that church in Reverend Sullivan. And he was known to say, uh, build, brother, build. And to me, that, that one quote symbolizes the African-American presence in the community. And even though it's changing, we can still continue to build our communities, uh, to build our culture and make it permanent. The colors and the patterns are kind of Afrocentric and very vibrant and they're very fluid. And once again, these are only like concepts. This will all change. So I'm kind of looking forward to comments from the community, comments from you guys as to how you see this operating. But my enjoyment was that it's a community that I've lived in and been a part of my life. And I wanted to bring something vibrant, uh, something flashy, something loud and something important there to the community. Uh, next. Is that it? Uh, this is my previous work. Uh, these works are to the top left is a community of uh, senior citizens uh, housing that's done in the same material as the sculpture. It's powder coated metal. And these are designs that were done in the front of a, of a parking area. And they symbolized in meeting with the community residents, they were all seniors. Uh, one of the things they all had in common was their devotion to going to, go to a church. So what I decided to do was do a design that sort of symbolizes in a conceptual way of stained glass sort of uh, screens or windows, but it's done in steel. On the bottom left, there's a, there's a, a bronze medallion that's cast bronze. It's about two feet high by maybe a little more. One minute, that. Gary. If, and so these are, are my past work, and it shows that I'm able to work in various mediums very fluidly. Next. Awesome. Thanks, That's Gary. It. All right. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, and I, I just wanted to mention to everyone, um, you know, we're you're seeing so much. You're seeing so many images, so many details, and it's a lot to take in. Um, but when you get onto the survey after this meeting, you can spend a lot more time. And as you saw, you know, Gary had a lot of, writing on his slides, you're gonna have the opportunity to read the artist's written descriptions. You're even, you can you know, you know can take more time to see all of these things again. Okay, sorry, Pauline and Kate. You're, you can unmute yourself and let me, okay, make it your first slide, okay. All right, hi, I'm Pauline Jusu McCall and this is I'm Kate Brockman. I'm a Philadelphia sculptor. I am a graduate of and faculty member at currently uh, the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts. And I have a studio in Port Richmond. Back to you, Paul. Back to me. All right. Well, how do we, you know, follow Gary? Jeez, that was beautiful. <laughs> and thank you to all the artists. Um, you know, um, Kate and I had lots of conversations uh, based around uh, decisions for um, this monumental um, uh, site-specific sculpture. And we went back and forth. But as we contemplated this, you know, huge monumental site-specific sculpture mosaic, um, I looked at Kate and I said, you know, this does not feel like a competition. It feels like a deep desire to create something beautiful for the community that I once grew up in. And it's just that desire is still there. And so um, 
I want to talk a little bit of, more about the community that I was raised in. Um, it is with great honor, and it always is with great honor that one, that we were chosen, but two, it is still with great honor to design for, you know, a community uh, such as at Broad and Erie and the Butler Triangle and the whole Butler um, neighborhood. Um, you know, after we created, um, you know, after we created what we created, we began to have this conversation with each other about how can we engage the youth? How can we have these children run from across like I did, uh, you know, from across uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, Erie Avenue? How can we engage them? How can we stop them and have them say, hey, that looks like me. That's me. And with a lot of the public art changing and moving and shifting away from um, figures that look like our children, I still think it's vital. We still thought it was vital for any child, um, any grown up to see themselves in these sculptures. So as we're looking here at this first slide, we're showing you um, the beautiful boy and girl with the book, which, you know, which will be inscribed with the quotes uh, that the community came up with and loved so well. And um, we show in the first slide, uh, the boy who also, the young boy who also has a book with quotes inscribed so that they're not only looking at themselves and looking at their faces um, that could be them or their cousin, but they're also reading these inspirational quotes, right? I can see them stopping um, all throughout. And you know, we can go to the next slide. Why not? Sure. Yes. So all throughout, um, thank you, all throughout our design on both the Erie um, Triangle and the Butler Triangle, we have these symbols of growth, which is the flower. We have the symbol of love, which is important. We're nothing without it in our communities. And we have the butterfly on the last one, which is our, our symbol of transformation. Also on the base of the sculptures that will be bronze, uh, will be um, fabricated in bronze. Um, you see that butterfly, the butterfly continues uh, to present itself throughout the, the design on both the Erie and the broad, um, the Butler Triangle. It is um, imperative, it's imperative for the children you know, to be able to see themselves or for adults. And I can just imagine running across um, because somebody, you know, someone said, meet us at the sculpture of the girl with the book near the library. Just like we said, meet us at the clothespin downtown. So we thought about these as becoming iconic, really iconic sort of, um, symbols and, and statues, if you are, or sculptures that kept, that keep bringing our children back to themselves um, in a neighborhood that's transitioning. Why not have it here? Um, I guess next slide. Next slide. Next slide. Yeah. slide. Why not? So uh, this example to the right, and it has words on it, so I'm just going to read from it. Um, is a bronze portrait sculpture of a young boy with uh, with a book, which will be inscribed with poetic passages and inspirational quotes. Um, the bronze sculpture exhibits the front and side view. It will stand at six feet and will be installed within the planners of the southeast corner of the Erie Triangle. The bronze sculpture will have a glass mosaic base. Uh, complete with butterfly and floral design just to show that transformation and beauty. I move across the city working with our youth all the time. And for me to find different ways to tell our youth that they're beautiful, that they're loved, um, that they're symbols of growth and transformation. Anytime I can do that, I'm going to do that. Right, Miss Kate? Right on. All right. Next slide, please. So you'll have to, the slide is a little wonky, but that's okay. You get the idea of the seated bench or the seated wall um, with these symbols that are across an Erie Avenue. Um, we want both triangles to speak to each other. We want the symbols that are across on 
eerie triangle to really connect with the Butler triangle. And uh, we want those symbols of growth, of beauty, and of transformation. Um, this slide illustrates the detail of the mosaic in the seated wall to be installed within the seating area of the Butler Triangle. And I can just imagine, because I love libraries and I grew up going to that library just to keep our toes warm because it was cold waiting for the Pauline, you just Pauline, got you're, you're, there you I are. just muted ourselves. Okay, sorry. But so, but I can imagine librarians saying, um, bring the school group, let us meet at the mosaic wall. So all of this, um, when we were, Kate and I were working on it, we thought about the community. We saw the children running, right? We we saw the children seated with uh, librarians. We saw picnic lunches with school groups. We saw that happening there. I think ours is very youth oriented now that I think about it. Next slide, please. Um, this slide illustrates, again, another version of the seated wall. Um, and we decided to do the bike racks. Um, this slide exhibits the Braun portrait sculpture. So you can see the sides. Um, imagine your child or anyone walking up and seeing a sculpture of a head of a young girl that is almost the size that they are. So we thought that was uh, pretty interesting. Um, this slide exhibits the bronze sculpture of a young girl with book inscribed with inspirational quotes, again, chosen by the community. And we have many that we love. Uh, this particular illustration shows the scale of the sculpture in reference to the size of the butterfly bike rack. So I think it would be pretty cool to put your bikes at the bottom of something that reminds you to transform. And one of our favorite, one of my favorite quotes is, uh, because it reminds me of myself by Sonia Chan Sanchez, I cannot stay at home on this sweet morning. I must run singing, laughing through the streets of Philadelphia. I don't need food or sleep or drink on this wild scented day. I am bathing in the waves of your breath, Sonia Chan Chancha. So there is a youthful um, feeling and vibe about what we are doing. And I think it's because I'm always with our youth and I'm always, that is such a, um, a fabulous uh, thing to be able to to show them and show our world. Um, and then are we done? One more. Oh, yeah. there is the illustration of the bike racks. Uh huh. Um, the image to the right, uh, right represents the design of the bike racks, which will be done with K. They'll be uh, stainless steel and powder coated. Okay, for those colors. And I thought just like Gary, I, I kept thinking about those trolley car colors. And this just those those different colors that, that reminded me of Broad and Erie of that area coming up. I know that driving um, as a little girl behind a trolley, those little circle lights. And so those colors um, were chosen because I guess somewhere psychologically that they just kind of embedded themselves. But those are the butterfly bike racks of which you can tie your bikes to as you go about your day and remember um, transformation. You have one minute, Pauline. Do we okay. Have, do we, do have, we have another slide or are we done? Um, let's see. You've got there it slide. is. Okay. And I just wanted to show you the... Um, bronze sculpture of the, the beautiful young girl. Um, this example displayed on the right shows the front and side of the bronze portrait sculpture, which is slated for the installation on a northwestern corner of the Butler Triangle. The oversized bronze sculpture will have a mosaic base with a symbolic butterfly and flower and found it on the seated wall. So we're continuing to make that, um, that connection between um, transformation, beauty, and love is how I feel about my community, how we feel about creating these works for this community. I hope you like it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Polly and Kate. All right. So 
That was um, a lot of amazing things to see and take in. And um, we're going to move now into an opportunity for you to get to ask questions directly to the artists and a little bit of housekeeping before we start. Um, you can use the raise your hand feature and you'll be called on to unmute yourself, share your questions. I'll call on you. So it's one at a time. And we encourage a conversation with the finalists, but also ask you to respect everyone's time. So if you've already asked one question, we'll give other people a turn before giving you more turns unless there's no one else. Um, remember, please keep yourself muted when you aren't speaking. And very importantly, even if you don't get to speak tonight or if you end up just you know needing to spend a lot more time with these images, um, we want your feedback on the survey. It's very important. So um, even if you do speak tonight, even if you don't speak tonight, please fill out the survey when, when we're done and I'll share the link with you at the end. So I'm gonna help have this slide up for our conversation just because I think it's helpful. Um, again, I know the images are so tiny that it, it can be hard. So if we need to see something larger, I could possibly scroll back if it's important, but this will be kind of our landing place while we're having this conversation. Um, so I wanna open it up now to all of you. And again, if you have a question for someone specific, um, a team in particular or an artist in particular, just you know, say their name first, or if it's a more general question, you can just let us know this is a question anyone could answer. Okay, I see Tonita has raised a hand. You can unmute yourself, Tonita. Hi, um, I um, I wanted to know, I guess this is for Pauline and Kate. Um, how, I, I'm just blown away by how gorgeous these images are and imagining young people seeing themselves um, in such stature. And uh, you said they were six feet tall, like from yes. top to bottom. Okay. Um, and how long does it, how many of them were there maybe? So there will be two. There will be one for each triangle. So one will be on the Butler Triangle and near the library, and one will be on the Erie Triangle. Okay. All right. um, and the quotes you said would come from the community, or is that something you've already collected? The quotes? Well, there were a collection of quotes from uh, the community and um, you know we were to choose one or two that really you know resonated with the images um, uh, the sculptures and mosaic uh, pieces as well as the bike racks we wanted to you know they wanted us to consider them um, in our design at some point um, so Yes, those are collected by the community to answer your mm -hmm. question. Yeah. I love that idea. Thank you, Tony. Thank, Thank you. you. I've also opened up the chat. If you're someone who'd prefer to type in a question, you're welcome to do that as well. Don't be shy. Priscilla Bell, you can unmute yourself. Hi, this is um a general question for pretty much everybody. Um, I guess they can go around. Like, uh, I would like to see what kind of some things, if you've already thought about like community engagement um, 
my um I'm very familiar with this area. Um, uh, you know, my I grew up in Hunting Park, so not you know, and and we used to, you know, at least shop on Germantown and Broad and when I was a kid and stuff like that. And you know, it'd be really nice to see what kind of community engagement some of the artist teams have in store for uh, if they have uh, any plans for that. Well, I, I have an idea. Uh, I realize the community is, is sort of in transit and there's a, uh, a there's always been a, a, a great deal of creative people in the nice town Tioga area. Uh, Lee Morgan's family was there. Uh, Spanky DeBress, the, the bassist, the jazz bassist, was living there. Uh, plenty of other people. So the community always had had folks there who, who could, could contribute something aside from the, the regular sort of uh, uh, pedestrian, uh, plebeian sort of perspective. So one of the things that I'm looking forward to doing is to engage in community residents and dialogues. And, and having words and text wherever I could put them. Um, because I, is it, when you have visual images, it's good. When you have art, it's fine. But I think people can engage in other ways. And someone said a moment ago that their artwork, the uh, Pauline and, and Kate were saying that is geared towards youth. Uh, one of the ways of doing that is to have children tell their stories and have those, those words placed around somewhere. Um, I heard part of, part of the uh, question, and it had to do with um, living in Huntington Park and having experiences there when you were younger. I think those things can be incorporated into art. I mean, to these artworks, anybody's work can do that. So I think for all four artists, we, we are available for those kind of dialogues. Thanks, Gary. Are there any other artists that want to share thoughts about community engagement? I'll just yeah. chime in really quickly. Um, one of the things that we were thinking of, as Kier mentioned, our inspiration came from a collection of the quotes, the quote from Frederick Douglass, from Barack Obama, Sonia Sanchez. But we also left the sculptures um, with um, a flat finish so that quotes could be inscribed into the the facade of of our sculptures so we are we're hoping to have that be a part of continued community engagement if there is a quote or a series of quotes that comes from the community um, that's one opportunity that we're hoping for yeah Pauline, so, also want to hi. Question. So to answer Priscilla's uh, question, so uh, Kate and I were thinking about a series of of um, immersive and community projects, and so one of the ones we were thinking about is uh, on the larger mosaic pieces, which will be cut into many um, large squares. We would have. Um, you know, young kids as well as their families, uh, paint them before we send them to the kiln. The, the background tile will be, is already prefabricated uh, to get a, a gorgeous, beautiful, uh, cohesive. We chose that light blue, um, like Gary speaks about calming, you know, as, as a calming color, because we know that we have a lot of other sort of bright colors going on. So that was one of the things. And then Miss Kate, you were going to do. Yeah, I, um, I actually do all uh, my own bronze work and foundry work. And I have small um, traveling furnaces that I have done demos and workshops with kids. I need to do this in an outdoor place. Um, but it's really fun to melt some aluminum and pour it into things. Um, and it just lights kids' uh, faces up. We can pour them into buckets of Orbeez. And Ooh. I can talk about the whole uh, casting process at the same time. Um, and uh, also put together a video um, or a presentation that I can do after the fact, after these uh, bronze pieces have gone through the entire mold making, ceramic gel, uh, burning out, uh, casting process. It's really informative and it's really a fascinating process. And I love to share that. 
whenever I can. Oh, and I have one more thing that I just thought about when we're sitting here. You know, meals and meal time is so important and feeding our communities is so important. So what if on one of those triangles, you know, during the community, maybe it's culminating afterwards that we set a big, beautiful table on Broad Street. How about that? That would be fabulous, right? I don't know. I just came up with that. Also, as a musician and vocalist, I've been traveling across the city uh, with an initiative called I Dream a World and I've been working with kids. They've been um, writing songs of, of how they see their world and what how they want to change the world. So we can have some food and stand out there after we do our artwork and sing. How about that? Do you want to do that? Let's do that. I don't know. I, I just I just want to engage like that poem, you know, I want to engage our communities in, in joy right? I want them to, to feel beautiful. I want these Black children who are told on television that they're not by virtue of not telling them at all. You know, we want this to come forward. And we also, like uh, Diamond said, we want you to drive down Broad Street and be like, sure. you know, look at that. What's that? You know, so, but so, we, we do sculptures gold leaf, so. <laughs> so we just have about 15 minutes left and we want to make sure we let everyone who wants to ask a question, ask a question. Um, so thanks, Pauline and Kate. Um, and I saw that we have a question in our chat um, from Stephanie Fuentes. It says, what was the quote that the other artists were interested in, Gary and Amber Art? And I think that Linda might have asked, uh, might have answered the question for Amber Art. Why don't we start with Gary? Uh, there are several qu quotes. Um, the Sankofa bird, um, the Sankofa bird is a, is a graphic symbol for West African philosophy that says it's okay to, to go towards the past, to retrieve the golden egg, good things, but at the same time, you got to move forward. Um, that's a quote that I like. Uh, Reverend Sullivan's quote, build, brother, build. Uh, there's a whole body of poetry uh, the poets, uh, they mentioned Sonia Sanchez, Nick and Giovanni. Uh, I'm quite sure there are rappers and other artists, uh, vocal artists who were there in Philadelphia that we can approach them for quotes. And that would appeal to like, you know, a younger sort of generation. But as, as, as far as a particular specific quote, I'm open for anything. Thanks, Gary. We've got a hand from Rob Fire. You can unmute yourself. Hi, right, thank you. Yeah, this is wonderful. Um, and I'm a native Philadelphian, and this is one of my favorite intersections of the city. And I've been longing to see something like this happen, where is given uh, some um, respect to the grandiosity of the intersection, has some grandiosity uh, within itself. And so I love the images of uh, the, especially the sculptures with the children showing their faces also advocating literacy uh, and um, it's good to see what in the face of such gentrification that's going on um, recently uh, in that area it's nice to see something that's representative the children can see their own faces the people who live there can see themselves there and and, uh, and take some reassurance from that and um, I guess I, my question I was just wondering it's not really so much a question just wondering when you write the words in the books there um, have you considered maybe uh, continuing with the words in other areas of the park or other setup that you have, continuing that theme of literacy? And because you mentioned you had a lot of community input, mm -hmm. and I think it would be great to get as much of that as, as possible included in. I was wondering if you thought about that at all. I think that's a great idea, uh, Rob Fire. Um, absolutely. Um, wow. Yeah, let's do that. Let's think about that. Let's totally think about that and do it. Don't argue with me, Kate. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. That was fabulous. Thanks, Rob. Are there any other burning questions out there. This is your chance to get to talk to these incredible artists. So think about um, anything you might be wondering. I'm 
the hearts, aren't you? I'm getting... Yeah, you know, as Rachel said, now is such a great time if you have any questions to ask them because you want to make sure that as you are directly after this meeting, when we open up the, the survey, that you're as informed as possible to go ahead and um, rate each of these designs. Um, and, and also, as Rachel mentioned, um, add any uh, uh, feedback in writing because that's really how we're going to be taking your feedback is through the survey. So again, any questions that you have, Now's a great time to ask those. I'm seeing some comments. Uh, thank you. Beautiful work from everyone. Uh, there's, uh, there's another question from Stephanie. To Diamond and Michael, can you talk about safety regarding the pointy tops of the triangle? Excuse me, of the triangles. I guess I'll take that one, Diamond. And also, how tall are they? How, how is the height of them as well? So these these are going to be taller than your average person, and um, I, they're not designed to be able to climb. So unless someone's, you know, jumping off of something higher, I, I don't imagine a an injury uh, potential. Yeah, they're about um, a little over six feet tall, and it'll be a shiny material. So just seconding um, the actual height, what Michael said. But that is something that we could further continue to think about. All right, we have another comment in the chat from Joyce Brooks. It says, the, the work is beautiful. Can anyone else send in their artwork? And if so, who will they contact? So uh, Joyce, thank you for your comment. Um, so uh, these are our four um, artists who have been selected uh, by the Percent for Art Committee, uh, as, as Rachel mentioned, comprised of community members and other um, stakeholders with this project. Um, as also, as we mentioned earlier, there was an open call that um, was open to anyone to apply. And then from that larger group of people who applied, as this, this smaller group, four, four artist teams were selected um, based on their artist qualifications, based on answers to short, answer to, uh, to short questions, um, the committee selected these artists. So there's, there's not opportunity for anyone to apply to this particular project but um, the city commissions artworks uh, very frequently for the city. And so there are other opportunities that are, are coming up soon. So let us know if you, um, if you know of an artist that uh, uh, is, might be interested in doing public artworks around the city and we can make sure that they uh, receive future calls for artists. But thank you. All right, um, I'm gonna move us along as I'm not seeing any other hands. Although we did just get one more comment from Stephanie who said, thanks all, so glad to see proposals from Philly artists. Um, so I'm gonna move us along to just go over how to fill out the survey, which is your next step here. So, Participate in the public input survey. So you're gonna have a chance to rate all four of the design proposals that you just saw. And there's also a space where you can type in specific comments. And your input is, is so very important. It's gonna inform the next chapter of this project. So the comments that you put in are specifically going to get shared with these artists who are going to consider what you've said in possibly revising their designs to take your thoughts into consideration. And your ratings of these proposals are going to be compiled and will be one of the um, factors that the committee will consider when they're deciding on a winning artist. One of the things that they will consider is how well were these um, designs received by the public. So this is your chance to 
put in your input. Um, I want to encourage you when you go to the survey to scroll down to see each proposal and then keep scrolling. So you're going to see the proposals in the same order that you just heard from them tonight. So first you'll see Amber Art and Design. You'll get to see the images. You can read about it. You can even click to hear Linda and Kier speaking some more about their project. And then there'll be an area for you to rate and put in comments and then keep scrolling. And then you'll come to Diamond and Michael and you'll keep scrolling till you get to look through all of them. It should take about 15 minutes and make sure when you get to the very bottom, you click submit so that your, um, your feedback is recorded. And I think that might be about all unless um, Marguerite, you have anything else to add about the survey. And I'm just gonna for a moment um, come out of this large screen so I can grab the link and then share it with you. Uh, yeah, no, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone for uh, attending tonight. I just want to, again, take another opportunity to to plug the survey and implore you to um, participate. Even if you've made some comments tonight, the way that we are uh, cataloging and can compiling all of your comments uh, is through the survey, just to give everybody an equal playing field who may not have been able to attend tonight. And that's why, as Rachel mentioned, when you go to the survey, uh, each of the artists have like a, a two minute, um, you know, audio description of their, so you can listen to each of the artists in their own voice, describe, um, you know, the story that they're telling behind their artwork and, and, and the written um, comments. And so definitely share with your um, neighbors and with your friends and colleagues and let them know about this survey that will be running until April 24th. Okay, so I just, I popped the um, link into the chat so you can, Click on that, and um, I see there's there are 22 people here right now, so we should get 22 uh, surveys filled out and coming in after this meeting. And um, I'm also going to email this link to you so you can share it with other people you know um, who live in the neighborhood and who might want to give their input also as to what art will be coming soon. So take a moment to click on that or copy it so that you have it here, but I'll, I'll also follow up and send it to you after. And that's and all. And thank, thank you to all of our artists Yes, uh, for your wonderful presentations. Uh, just every time I, I, I look at the work, I'm, I'm getting more excited for the day when we will have a winning artist uh, selected for this project. So thank you all of you. Thanks everyone for, for spending some of your evening with us on this project and um, we'll be in touch. Good night, everyone. Bye. Good night. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, I think we did well.